welcome to another episode. In today's episode, I am going to be talking about object fit and object position. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you find this video useful, share it with someone else. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, if you want to support my channel, I'm going to leave my PayPal link in the description below. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so to get started with CSS, object fit and object position, I am going to divide this video in two parts. First part, I will explain object fit and in the second part of the same tutorial today, I will explain the object position property. Now, I need you to have opened the same website we've been using so far, which is w3schools.com. I need you to jump into the CSS section and scroll all the way down to where it says object fit. At the same time, we are going to have opened the same website we've been coding. I already have it clean and the code we've been using. I already have the index file and the style sheet open in here. Okay, so to get started, first of all, let me explain you what the object fit property will do. The object fit property is used to specify how an image or a video should be resized to fit its container. Now, with this property, we have a couple of values. The first value uh, you have is fill. This is the default one and the image is resized to fill it the given dimensions. Okay. Now the second one is contain. The image keeps the aspect ratio, but it's resized to fit within the given dimension. Then you have cover in uh, the image keeps its aspect ratio and it fills the given dimension, right? Then you have none and the image is not resized, of course. And then you have scale down. The image is scaled down to the smallest version. So so those are the values. Now let's take a look at some examples so you can see um, how this will work. And by the way, I already have downloaded the image and I saved it into our images folder right here. The image we're going to be using for this example will be Paris. Okay. So going back here, let me give you the first example. And the first example, you guys are going to see uh, the value of cover. Okay. So let's hit here where it says, try it yourself. Okay, so for the first example here, let's go ahead and use the HTML code that you see here. Let's copy that and let's paste it into our index file.html. Now I am going to hit save. The image here, the source, is actually in our images folder. And then uh, the image is called Paris. So that's the one we're going to be using. Okay, so let's hit save. Going back to our code, let's hit refresh. And boom, you see uh, the image is right there right now. Now, uh, we already gave uh, a width of 400 and a height of 300. Now, when we go to our style, we are going to give a different width and height to the image. And then we are going to make it fit. And we're going to use the value of cover. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's hit save. The object fit here is cover. Let's go ahead and hit refresh. And boom, you see now how the image has been um, resized because obviously we're using a width of 200 and 300 pixels of height. Um, and then the object fit is cover. Now remember, what does cover does? If you can go ahead and actually read a little bit here, it's when the image keeps its aspect ratio and it fills the given dimension. So the image will be clipped to fit, okay? Which is what happened here. You see, the original image, let me open the original image out for you. Okay, so the original image has, you see how it has um, something else here on the left? And you can see also something black here in the right of the tree. So here with the cover um, value, it was clipped to fit the dimensions that we gave, which is 200 and 300 pixels. Okay, so that's exactly um, what the cover value will do. Now let's go ahead and close this out and let's uh, test out another value. We're going to go ahead and uh, use the contain value in this example. We're going to hit here where it says try it yourself. Okay, and in this example, um, we are going to have the width and height to be 200 and 300. So the width and height will be the same. Let's just change the value of object fit to contain. Okay, so I'm going to change that right now. Let's say the value will be contained. So let's save. Now let's hit refresh. And boom, you see now how this has been resized, but now 
in contain, it's containing um, actually the same uh, uh, aspect to ratio, okay? So as you can see here, contain, the image keeps its aspect ratio, but it's resized to fit within the given dimension, which is 200 by 300, right? So that's what it does here. The image is not clipped. Now you can see uh, the entire image, but it was fit to uh, the dimensions that we gave, which is 200 by 300 pixels. Okay, so okay, so the next example we're going to see here is going to be fill, okay? And remember by reading here, fill is the default value. So the image will be resized to fill the given dimension. And if necessary, the image will be stretched or squished to fit meaning that the image will look a little bit horrible because when you stretch something or you um, shrink something, you know, it doesn't look good, but it'll fit the dimensions that we're going to give it, right? So if you go ahead and you take a look at this right now, at this example, let's go ahead and change the value here from contain to fill, and you will see how the image will change now. So when I hit um, refresh, Boom, you see, now the image is 200 by 300 pixels width and height, and it has been fit to its um, same size. Like it, you can see all the content of the image there, but it has been stretched and it has been a little bit squished to fit the dimension. So it doesn't look good, but it fits. So that's another, another thing you can do there. And then Obviously, if you go ahead and you set this up to none, the image will not be resized. So if we go ahead and change um, the value here, let's uh, go back to our code and let's change this from fill to none. Hit save, going back to our welcome page, hit refresh. The image, um, as you can see here, it does not have an object fit. As you can see, we are not able to see these two things any longer. Okay, so those are uh, the main values. And there is actually one more that I want to show you, which is the scale down value in here. If we go ahead and we uh, hit here where it says try it yourself and you see the code, when you use scale down, what's going to happen is that the object is going to scale down to fit within the width and height that you're providing to um, the actual image. So. Let me go ahead and show you the scale down now um, value here. So instead of none, we're going to use scale down. Let's hit save, going back to our code, refresh, boom. You see how now that this has been resized and it's smaller. So that's what you will do with the scale down value. Okay, so those are all the values that I wanted to show you so that you can use and actually play around with your images and um, you can go ahead and actually play around um, with, with some other examples like videos and stuff like that, okay? So let's go ahead and move on with part two of this tutorial today. Part two will be the object position. So let's go ahead and click there, object position here in the left side. And let me explain first, what does this property do? So the property object position is used to specify how an image or a video should be positioned within its container. Okay. So here again, we have an image and we already, uh, let's say that we fit it to cover, to cover the entire, um, uh, width and height that we provided, right? You can go ahead and do that first. So let's go ahead and change this from scale down to cover, hit save, going back to our code, let's hit refresh, okay, there you go. So now uh, the value it's cover, but when we uh, are trying to position the image, probably, I don't know, let's say that we do not want to see maybe this portion right here or this tree right here. Maybe we want to move the image and the only portion that we want to see it's, I don't know, Eiffel Tower or maybe only this tree or maybe only this part right here. Well. You can do that by using the object position property. How do you do that? Well, you need to specify um, what percentage you want to apply this to X and Y. X is the first value because it'll make it move horizontally and Y it's the second value because it's gonna make it move vertically up and down, okay? So let's go ahead and let's hit here where it says try it yourself. And we are going to move this image so that the portion of the image that we see which by default is the tower and the buildings, um, it's going to be moved to only show the building without the tower. 
okay? By doing that, we're going to apply 80% of position, moving to X 80%, and on Y, we're going to move 100%. So let's go ahead and let's do that. I'm going simply to copy this, and going back to our code, we are going to paste this here. Okay, remember X, Y. So let's hit save, going back to our code, let's hit refresh. And boom, you see now how this has changed? Now the image has been positioned correctly in the portion that we want it to be shown. Now we are not seeing the Eiffel Tower, we're seeing something else. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. When it comes to object positioning, that's pretty much what you can do. If you want, you can go ahead and actually play around with percentages. If you barely only want to show the Eiffel Tower, then you can go ahead and change the position to 15 and 100. If we go ahead and we do that, let's change this from 15 to 100, hit save, going back to our code, let's hit refresh. Boom, you see how now the tower is the main uh, portion of the image that is shown. So that's exactly um, what you're going to do with object position, okay? And this is so useful because sometimes you are going to want that. You're going to want to see just a portion of it in your website, depending upon client requests, okay? So I hope that you have learned a lot in this video. That's pretty much what is it about object position. That's why I said it was super short, <laughs> the part two of this video. Um, but again, I mean, if you have questions about any of uh, the subjects that we covered today, you can leave them in the comment section below. I will read them and make sure to reply as soon as I can. So that was it for this episode, everyone. If you like the video, remember to give me a thumbs up. That really helps my channel. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you will always get notified every time that I am uploading a video. Also remember that you can always ask Lixie. Bye everyone and see you again in the next episode.